Well, as I record this, we are one day away from the launch of our newest podcast series that Ian and I do. It's going to be called Jerry Anderson's Heroes and Villains, and it's the same kind of format that we do with our other podcast shows. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at Jerry Anderson's shows from Fireball XL5 up to Terrorhawks, um, with the exclusion of uh, Secret Service. And we're going to go through the show one by one, and each time we're going to look at a story from that show. We're going to look at the heroes and the villains and the craft in each story, okay? And uh, as I say, Fireball XL5 is out tomorrow. I'll put the the link to the Neozaz homepage uh, for it, but we're on iTunes and uh, presumably Spotify as well, and all good podcasting uh, providers, plug, plug. Um, and because of that, um, I'm all fired up on things Jerry Anderson, and um, um, I thought it's about time I made another Jerry Anderson kit. I think the last one I did was Thunderbird 3, um, and I said then I'll have to do some more, and it's taken a while, but um, here we go. Um, no, it's not. It wasn't Thunderbird 3. It was Captain Scarlet's SPV and all that horror I had. That's somewhere in my video list here. So, uh, yeah, something a bit unusual this time. Rather than uh, an MI injection plastic kit, we've got a resin kit. We've got a garage kit by Warp. Warp have been around, called cool, blimey, since the 90s. Um, I always remember them for doing an awful lot of uh, uh, Federation uh, starships from Star Trek. Um, and uh, here we are. This is the Titan Terrorfish from Stingray. Um, and as I say, as I'm recording, Stingray is our next one that we'll be doing, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this craft. Um, so I thought I'd have a go at it, and um, and why not? It's uh, 170 second scale, which is good, because I always like comparing uh, craft when I've made them to craft that I've got that are the uh, in the same scale. So it's going to be interesting to put this alongside an X-Wing or what have you. So, yeah, nice box, nice bit of artwork, very simple instruction sheet. It tells you that there are seven parts, and these are they, and uh, really nice. Uh, no air bubbles. Those bubbles are meant to be there. That's, uh, that's his scaly uh, skin. So we have the front, a bit of cleaning up to do there. This is for a hinge. I guess you can have it, uh, the uh, the mouth, you know, that the missile fires out of, uh, open or closed. So front half, back half, just some flashing to, to remove, but not nice and smooth and clean. That's good. Um, there's the lower jaw. That's the inside. No, that's the outside. There's the inside. This bit is the most work I've got to do, which is cut this excess resin out so it fits in there. I'm going to do it with the mouth shut. I'm not going to have the mouth open. It hasn't got a missile and I don't fancy making one. A couple of white metal pieces for his fins, which go here like this. Um, and then the eyes. And the eyes are the thing, aren't they? Um, these are actually windows to the craft. And um, I, I, I remember in one of the modeling magazines. I don't think it was this kit. It can't have been this kit. This is solid resin. I think somebody had a vac form version of this and they they really had a good idea in that um, behind this, they cut this out. They had a photo of the, is it Aquafibians? The guys that pilot these ships. They had a photo behind there and this was a clear uh, uh, dome. So it looked like they were inside, but it was just a photo. That was a really nifty idea. But no, with these, it's solid resin. Um, it appears that on the model, um, the filming model, uh, they were just painted silver. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, painting wise as well, that's going to be a bit of a challenge because it, they always look quite odd, these ships, because um, they're painted like a mid-green. But then all these blobs, or a lot of these blobs, are coloured in like reds and yellows and blues. I guess to infer some sort of like exotic fish, but it looks like, you know, um, somebody's gone a bit mad with an aerosol can. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a, a, a bit of a challenge. All right, so first thing to do is, is clean all these things up um, prior to gluing them together. I've got to find the center of gravity, which holding those two pieces together seems to be about there. And I'm gonna drill a hole for a clear rod, because I'm gonna, 
it doesn't come with a base. I'm going to make a base for it. So it's going to be a clear rod there. And I have it in mind to go to the uh, local pet shop and get some plastic aquarium plants. And I'll just decorate the base with that. All right, so yeah, this is day one. Um, first thing to do then is clean it all up, drill a hole, and then give everything a wash. This can be quite fun when it's all washed to have a, a fish in the bath. Well, clean up was minimal. It really was. It was just a matter of uh, um, removing some flashing along the uh, tail spines and just cleaning up the rough edges of the, uh, the eyes and uh, cutting out that big chunk of resin there. I was toying maybe with the idea of replacing the eyes with clear ones and just paint the back of them black or silver just to give a bit more shine. But uh, these, it might be tricky to actually find a replacement that's the right height. You know, um, I'm sure I can get hemispheres, but to get them exactly the right size and height might be tricky. So, no, I'm just going to stick with silver. Um, and, uh, yeah, next next job is um, just glue them together with some five-minute epoxy. Oh, the other thing I've done is um, drilled a hole for the big clear rod. It's going to be a, a hefty size rod. Um to uh, uh, to take the weight of it because it is solid resin so it's going to weigh a bit when all all put together especially when the white metal fins are on as well um so that's that not in shot is the uh the uh, the base and the uh accessories which i will show when i've assembled it all right so here we've got a mdf base uh, one of many that uh, my friend Dover Dave gave me years ago and I've had in a box ready for a time when I might be able to use it. So just drilled, crudely drilled a hole in that, um, ready to go. Um, and then this is the thickness of acrylic rod I'm going to be using. I, I want it nice and thick because uh, I don't want it to sag over time because the, the ship is quite heavy. Um, I've been to my local pet shop and uh, I got a pack of these. Some of them are going to be far too big, but I'm thinking the smaller ones or I can cut them down. But it would just make for a sonic, uh, a, a little, make the base a little bit more colourful. They are a bit big. Look, there's, there's the ship alongside it and uh, there is the ship glued together so uh, on with some primer and then on with a base coat well looking substantial now in grey primer next step decide on the colour um, it varies um, especially this back half in some places it looks uh, in some scenes it looks dark green in others it's metallic so I think what I'm going to do is next step is paint the whole ship a dark green and have a ponder. All right, back half done. Um, so what that green is, what I decided to go for is um, Vallejo's um, extra dark green. All right, and over that I've washed um, known oil and I've dry brushed the green back over. Now I've got the challenge of what green do I paint the front? I didn't have a, a, a suitable green. Um, so this is a mixture of Games Workshop Elysian green and Vallejo's olive drab to give me this sort of like a mid green. Um, now what I'm going to do is like wash it with this dark green that I used at the back because in some shots the, the, the actual face is a lot darker and it's really only these like fins here that are going to be lighter so uh next step um yeah put a wash on getting nervous now i'm I'm happy with the greens but now i've got to put the colors on and i'm starting off with the yellow and um reference shots on google images they don't reveal too much, but uh, I've got the Stingray Blu-ray 
box set, uh, you know, ready for our our uh, um, podcast. And um, yeah, you've got this series of yellow dots going along all of these fins. And um, yeah, I'm getting nervous now because he's starting to go more colourful. Um, what I've done here is um, on the Blu-ray, that, that, they're just regular lines of regular yellow dots, um, which looked a bit fake to me <laughs> when you're talking about an artificial fish submarine. I'm, I'm talking about looking fake. Um, so, but anyway, I, just to, you know, um, try and make it look more natural or what, I, I, I varied the size of the dots and the order of the dots are not all in a regular line and they're not all the same shape shape trying to make it look a bit more organic i suppose um which is fine here i'm, I'm very nervous about putting it on here um but this is stage one stage two is going to get more colorful i've got to start putting the reds on and uh the blu-ray will have it that uh, there's like red areas here and it's very weird it looks to me not like so much um it's painted red more that it's it's um, um, made out of some like red styrofoam or something and the surface is ripped off it looks just like exposed foam you would have from a you know a, a children's toy that is red so I've got to try and replicate that and I'm thinking about just rather than picking out red spots which is what a lot of people do actually do a red area with more color on the top so next step is experiment with that. The other bit of progress with, with this is the uh, base. I've glued on the, uh, the solid acrylic rod uh, with uh, two part epoxy. And while it was setting, um, I've glued in, as you can see, the start of the pebbles. It's gonna be a bit of a pebbly um, seabed with the uh, the plants. I'm going to have it that the the, the terra fish is, is lurking amongst the plants like it does in the show. So uh, yeah, next step, attach the reds, attach the plants. Not far off now. So I've hot glued those aquarium plants in place. And also I hot glued some of the, the larger of the, uh, the pebbles in place and then I've just put some white glue in and, um, and put my scattered material over it. So I'm gonna leave that a whole day for that to dry out. And I'll be painting that. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the, 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 the actual subject himself. Um, this red stuff, okay, there, there we go. Just put that on and uh, it gives you a, that is, what is it? Hang on a second. That is Mephiston Red, um, watered down with the thing that I always uh, misname, Lamian Medium. You mix that down, um, so you've got like one part red to about four or five parts the medium, um, and it becomes a stain. So that's given me my red blotchy area. Um, without it being too vibrant. I've next got to just go in and do a few more uh, spots in other colors and uh, and then I'm gonna be done. All right, with the uh, with base done, it is done. I'm pretty pleased with how it's come out. Um, these plants are a bit too big, but no, I can live with that. And uh, I'm pleased how the, the red went um, and the yellow isn't, doesn't, here too bright now I've put the silver cockpit windows in so you're very pleased with that um, I've had a, my uh, my Jerry Anderson kicked uh, uh, itch scratched by building this I don't know how long it'll be before I do another Jerry Anderson uh, uh, craft um, as I film this tomorrow we're talking about stingray for the first time on our Jerry Anderson podcast and um, we're going to be voting on the terror fish so yeah if you like listening to podcasts um, down in the description I'll put a link to the parent site but it's also available on iTunes and, and I'm sure it's going to be popping up in other places as well uh, have a have a listen uh, let us know on our Facebook page what you think of it um, yeah so that's it um, 
Oh, but before I go, um, sometimes I do this. If I if I if I make a model that's a, a recognised scale, in this case it's one seventy second. I like to compare and contrast it with another craft or vehicle that I have, you know, in the same scale. So this is a one seventy second scale Terrafish, and I brought down for you today to compare and contrast. There it is, alongside the same scale um, Y wing fighter all right well thanks for tuning in and watching and uh i don't know when i'll be back with another um jerry anderson kit but the next one podcast we're doing after this will will be thunderbirds and i haven't built a thunderbird 2 since the 80s so i'm thinking maybe that <laughs>